Hey, I'm Jason Lucas, and today we're going to work on applying a trad lesser stone finish to the ceiling and soffit. The color is going to be charred olive, so let's get going. Okay, for our next step on the lesser stone ceiling, this ceiling actually has a slight skip trowel texture over it right now. So if I was to just go and start troweling over the surface with my first coat, I run the risk of kind of skimming over those high points and not getting very good coverage. So to avoid that, and this is also a good trick to use if you're not a very proficient troweler, is I'm actually gonna roll on my first coat of Luster Stone with a 3 8 inch nap roller. And I'm using a small weenie roller, small weenie roller tray, and I'm going to use a chip brush. This stuff, it, it is plaster, but it's a lot thinner than some of the heavyweight plaster, so you actually can roll it right out of the bucket. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I've got my luster stone, I've got my chip brush, and all my tape has been sealed in with the clear Modern Masters dead flat varnish to avoid any bleeding onto my trim. I'm just gonna go, and just like I'm painting, don't wanna build it up real thick on that tape edge, I just wanna get it covered. And I take my roller and I'm just going to start rolling over that surface. And I'm not trying to goop it on real thick. And I'm trying to create a lot of random movement. I'm constantly moving this roller around. Alright, so now I'm ready to start troweling my ceiling out. I've got the first coat rolled on. and. Uh, we're just gonna do like a basic, what you do with any most plasters if you're doing a three coat technique. So the first coat we're gonna do is what I call the DNA coat because it's gonna be the thickest coat. And um, the ridges I create in this are really gonna manipulate the movement for the rest of the finish. As I burnish my following layers over the top, this is what's gonna really create that movement is what I'm doing in this layer. And I'm gonna use a hawk and a trowel. You don't wanna use one of these on a real job situation. I know, you know, a lot of sample boards you see made with these guys, but uh, you're really setting yourself up for a hard time if you bring that to a job site. So I got my hawk and my trowel. I'm gonna go ahead and load my material on my hawk. I'm right-handed, so I'm only gonna use the right side of my trowel for the material, all right? If you get to where your trowel is completely caked in material on both sides, you're gonna have a really hard time doing a nice clean job. So I'm only using the right side and I'll use the toe, the front of the trowel as well. So let's get started. Okay, so I got my, my hawk loaded with my material. So again, I'm loading the right side of my trowel. And when you're troweling, troweling consists of two strokes. The first stroke is the application stroke to get the material on there. The second is the manipulation stroke. A lot of people try and just get it done in one stroke and they get frustrated and it looks kind of contrived and messy and they're fighting it. So I'm just gonna work out of my corner, stick that edge in the corner nice and tight so I can get it up to that edge. Okay, I don't want rainbows. Like I don't wanna make the same stroke every time when I come back and manipulate it again. This is gonna create the movement that kind of comes through in the final, final uh, finish. It's gonna make all my trial marks really pop through. So I want to make sure that they're nice and random and go a lot of different directions. Okay, so today we're gonna to start another Modelo project. This one's going on a ceiling, and it's a two-layer process this time. So instead of just having one overlay, we're gonna actually do two. So it's a much bigger Modelo. Okay, so what I'm doing is, like I said, my length needs a four-inch border on each side. And so I'm just gonna go along and mark with a pencil my four inches out, and then I'll mark it with tape. Okay, now that I have my Modelo sealed, so I know it's not gonna bleed, I'm gonna go ahead and base coat my under Modelo. Okay, so I have all my leafing on, my silver and my gold, and um, now I'm ready to overstain the Modelo before we pull it down. And
you want to do too is you want to have a plan when you're working a surface area, a larger surface area, is I want to keep a wet edge. So I'm not just going to trowel completely that way, then come back and trowel this way like I'm mowing a lawn or something. I'm going to move around this edge and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and I'm going to have to keep moving and moving. So you want to have a plan for that because you don't want to let one area of the edge set up because you're going to come back and you're going to trowel into it and if it's setting up you're going to skim the top off, you're going to get a really ugly look or you're going to get a hard line. So just kind of get a game plan and if it's too large of an area you want to have a second person helping you trowel so you can kind of tackle the, the area together. As I'm troweling too, especially if it's a larger surface, the material is going to start to set up a little bit on my trowel and when that starts to happen you'll start dragging bits of dry plaster through your material and it's going to make a mess. All you have to do from time to time is just take another blade and scrape the back edge of this trowel off where everything's collecting on and then maybe the front of the trowel too just to get it semi-clean so you can kind of start over again. All right. Okay, so this is how I hold my trowel. All right, I don't do the baseball player death grip here. Okay, I got my fingers here so I can really move it around and get that organic movement really easily. And then I can easily shift and drop it into this corner and bring it around and stuff. So, you know, it's just a little easier on your wrist too. So don't, don't do the death grip. All right, so now when I'm troweling this area, I'm just gonna use my full size trowel. And because I've brushed the coat on and rolled the coat on, this 90 degree edge is already covered for me, so it's going to make it a lot easier to trowel this one on. So I'm just going to load my material on my trowel, get it up in that edge, and I'll use the toe of my trowel and just get the material on across there. Now that my material is on, I can come back and just lightly manipulate it and give it a little character. Okay, for on the ceiling, for troweling my luster stone, I've got some of these tricky smaller areas. And um, of course, I'm not going to be able to use a trowel to get in there. I've gone ahead and brushed my first coat, just like I rolled my first coat on the ceiling. And what I'm going to use, I've got these small steel blades, act as trowels. And I've got this little one with the nice rounded edges. And I'm going to go ahead and use that because it's going to fit in this gap really nicely. And I can get my plaster in there. So all I do is load some material on my little blade and just start laying the material into this little area. I'm not worried about how it looks yet because I have to get it in there first before I can manipulate it. So I get it on there, full coverage, and then I come back and just lightly flow over the top and just lay it down and give my, my plaster to lay down real nice for me. Okay, so I'm starting my second coat now. So, so far we've rolled the coat, trialed that initial DNA coat. Now for the second coat, it's going to be a little tighter, so I'm going to raise the edge of this blade a little bit so I can skim a little more off, but I'll take advantage on this coat of uh, going ahead and covering any areas I don't like or any areas where I might have a holiday and I missed the plaster on the first coat. So this will be kind of the fix-it coat and kind of backfilling and kind of smoothing it out. Before you do your final coat, if you're concerned about this edge being a little messy, like you didn't get your trowel up in there enough, um, or you've built up too much plaster on your tape, sometimes it's a good idea to pull all the tape and retape before that final layer and give you a really nice, crisp, clean edge. It just depends on like what level of expertise you're at with troweling and how familiar you are with getting into those corners, but it's just a good trick. Okay, for my final coat, I've thinned my material 10 to 20 percent. Um, and the reason I did that is just going to like slick it up and I'm going to really get a nice, clean, tight coat. It's going to kind of polish this up and really make it kind of glow. And um, so again, just have a plan to get going on this one. This one, it's going to be a thinner coat, so it's going to set up a lot faster on me. So I'm going to need to like really keep it moving or I'm going to get a hard line. So just uh, get ready and keep moving with it pretty quick. Okay, so I finished my last coat now, and as you can see, you can see all this ridging and movement that was created by that DNA coat, the first coat that we trialed on I talked about. So that's kind of where all your movement's gonna come from and give the whole finished character. So as this dries down, it's gonna get a little shinier, a little shinier. It's nice and smooth now, and that's kind of the basics of trialing 
and acrylic plaster. All right.